Everybody needs a little time away I've heard a say From each other Even lovers need a holiday Far away from each other It's hard for me to say でもずっと一緒にいたいあふれる思いを美しいメロディーに乗せ歌ったシカゴを代表する一曲It was just、uh, so unique, and in a strange way, it was very Chicago. Uh, um, it was just a, a masterpiece. And I think、uh, all of us in the band uh, uh, realized it almost immediately. It was really a great feeling to have this successful album, this successful Hard to Say I'm Sorry,、uh, and to perform it live、um, was. Was a different, it was a different audience, and the、uh, dynamic between the band and the audience was,、uh, was very new for us. And、uh, you know, it was just、um, uh, the, most exciting, the most exciting feeling I think I've, I've had. Ballard の名作素直になれなくてを誕生させた重要な人物をロサンゼルスに訪ねた迎えてくれたのはこの曲の作者でプロデューサーのデイビッド・フォスターオリンピックのテーマ曲や映画音楽などを作曲し14個ものグラミーを受賞セリーヌ・ディオンやホイットニー・ヒューストンなど数々のアーティストのプロデューサーとしてヒットを生み出すスーパープロデューサー That is the single So that means that hard to say I'm sorry must have sold、uh, a million copies Now I didn't plant that there That, that was just there that, that is not a plant that it would be right next to the door where we were It felt, like it, it, it felt like it was going to be a hit song. There's a lot of times in my career where I've sort of thought we had something good and I was wrong. There's very few times when I knew we had something good and it was good. This was one of those moments. We, we all felt really, really good about it. I mean, it, it, Peter's lyric was just、uh, stunning and I, I knew that women would relate to it. You know, I mean, what woman doesn't want to hear a man say, I'm sorry? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's just the way it is. The fact that it became a number one hit twice in America. We had a number one hit with it, and then a group called As Yet, 20 years later or 10 years later, had a number one hit with it、uh, with Babyface. I think that's pretty amazing. Could be that it'll be a third time. That's what happens when you have a really good copyright. Everybody needs a little time away. I heard her say, from me, c h i l d The song to me personally, I mean, I didn't write the lyrics, so I can't speak to, you know, what Peter was trying to say. But for me, musically, I come from a classical background. And this is the song where I got to use the most all those piano lessons that my mother and father paid for, and all those times that I was practicing classical music when I didn't really want to be practicing it. If you listen closely to that song, it's very. Classically based. So it just kind of reminds me of all the hard work I put in as a child、um, to get to the point where I could access those kind of chords and those kind of progressions. And to be lucky enough to work with a band like Chicago who could take it to full fruition, and in this case, Peter in particular, and turn it into the giant hit that it was, it's, it's very rewarding.
cello. Everybody needs a little time away, I heard her say, from Beach Island. ともなったシカが素直になれなくてこの曲はどのように生まれたのだろうか中はこの町のデポール大学の学生が中心となり一つのバンドが結成されたザ・ビッグ・シングという名称で地元クラブを中心に活動。ロックにブラスを取り入れたスタイルで人気となりある一人のプロデューサーのもとシカゴ・トランジット・オーソリティというバンド名でメジャーデビューすることとなったまず、uh, the relationship with the Jim Gersio was the fact that he was a schoolmate With、uh, Walt Parizader and Jimmy Panko. And、uh, when, we when we first, the first year that we were playing in little clubs,、uh, Walt called Jimmy and said, You should come and hear this band.、Uh, Jimmy had already started being a very successful producer with、uh, Chad and Jeremy and the Buckinghams, and he was soon going to do. Of blood, sweat, and tears. What goes up all alone? James William Garcia was a producer. The Chicago Transit Authority was a producer of the first album. The first album was a producer of the first album. 新人としては異例の2枚組でのリリースとなった60年代末の混沌としたアメリカ社会をテーマにしたメッセージ色の強い楽曲で彼らは反体制の急先方と言われた。We Very aware of、uh, civil rights problems. We were very aware of the war in Vietnam. So there was, there was political and、uh, social issues that, that, we, fe that we, were, we felt that we were a part of the generation that needed to make an impact. So、uh, those were the kinds of things we were thinking about. And so some of those ideas ended up in the songs.
while we were recording the very first album, um, one of the record company people came in to the studio and was listening to the music and was just kind of, we were just kind of talking. And he said, you know, why call it Chicago Transit Authority? Why not just call it Chicago? So we all sort of looked at each other and said, what a great idea. It's so logical. If the point is, if the point was, if Gersio's point was to try to identify where the music began, but why not just call it Chicago? Band name of Chicago to change the second album to release. This album from long nights was a hit worldwide. Chicago was the name of the city that brought the name to life. So, 25 or 64 is really a song about writing a song, about writing that song. And in the imagery, because it was really sort of still kind of acid, rock, jazz, fusion type era, the beginning of that. So I was using sort of acid imagery to describe the process of writing a song. So I talked about the room I was in and the, the view I had out the window. Uh, the title of the song was just something that I, I thought of for two seconds. And uh, I didn't know at the time I was going to call the song 25 or 6 to 4. It was just a phrase, but it was very catchy. In 1972年に発表したアルバム、シカゴファイブは、シカゴ初の全米ナンバーワンアルバムとなり、その中のこの曲も多くの人に親しまれた。前作シカゴファイブから九作目まで、五作連続一位という記録を樹立。シカゴの勢いはアルバムセールスだけにとどまらず、シングルも常に上位を占めるようになった。まろやかに洗練された独自のポップスタイルが花開き、バンドの方向性も少しずつ変わり始めた。1976年この曲が3枚目のミリオンセラーシングルとなりバラード路線のシカゴを印象付けた1977年11作目のアルバムをリリース。原点回帰的な曲も含まれるものとなったしかしアルバムリリース後音楽性の違いからデビュー以来プロデューサーを務めてきたジェームズ・ウィリアム・ガルシオを解雇そして翌年中心的な役割を果たしてきたギターのテリー・キャスが拳銃の暴発事故で死去Both of those things happening, happening were, um, had a big effect on, on all of us uh, emotionally um, and, of course, business-wise. But uh, after, I, I think the death of Terry Kath was probably, uh, obviously, the, the, biggest, uh, the biggest tragedy for us to deal with. And essentially, we've, we had spent you know, 10 years already together as, as a very close friends. And after, after maybe six months and talking to each other and talking to friends, we thought, you know, we obviously were thinking, well, that's the end of everything. But it wasn't the end of everything. It was just 
like a death in a family. A family continues. A family doesn't stop just because someone passes away. So that was pretty much, um, uh, that, was, that was kind of the process we went through. So by, you know, at the end of one year, uh, we had decided to continue to tour to f try to find somebody who uh, could play guitar and fill in. And, um, and we began working on the next album and the next tour. 絶望的な状況を打開すべく迎えたのはビリー・ジョエルなどのプロデュースで有名なフィル・ラモーン新生地下号を印象づけたが以前ほど勢いはなくなり続くアルバム「シカゴ13」は流行のディスコサウンドを導入するもセールス的には低調だった。14作目ではプロデューサーにロッド・スチュワートを手がけ成功していたトム・ダウドを起用しかし時代はニューウェーブ全盛シカゴの音楽性は受け入れられずチャートセールスともに散々な結果にシカゴは深い闇を漂っていた Hey, そんなシカゴに新たな命を吹き込んだのがバラードの名手といわれるデイビッド・フォスターだった。Along, 1980, sales, think, selling, right produce, produce, so they were pretty much bottomed out, probably still touring and making a lot of money. But they had lost their way. So, my job was、uh, to try to remind them of their greatness. And that's exactly what I did. And it was so easy for me because I was such a fan. I was one of those guys that was standing in line at Tower Records at midnight when the store opened for the new Chicago album. That was me. Earth, Wind, and Fire in Chicago, they were my two favorite bands. So, I knew their music. Intimately, upside, downside. I knew their music every which way better than they did. And what I proceeded to do was to try and remind them of their greatness. He said to me that he thought that based on the huge success of If You Leave Me Now, that he thought Chicago should think about doing more ballads because.、Um, In the 80s, it began to be very sort of up tempo, jumpy rhythms, you know, 80s music. And he said for Chicago to be different, maybe do ballads. And, and David is a master at producing ballads, at composing and producing ballads. Ballad in Chicago. そんな新しい道を模索しシカゴは名曲誕生への道を進むこととなった80年代を代表するバラード素直になれなくてが生まれた場所を訪ねた。ロサンゼルスにあるレコーディングスタジオこのスタジオはアルバム「シカゴ16」のレコーディングに使われたうちの一つこのスタジオのオーナーで素直になれなくてのミキサーでもあるビル・シュニー I started construction of my studio in January of 1980 and as the summer of 81 was approaching it was about It was about 85% complete, minus the console. We built the recording console as well as the entire studio. 
And David Foster called me and told me that he was getting his big break, which was to do the band Chicago. And he really wanted to be the first person in the studio. Uh, I said, well, um, you know, it's, it's not ready, for, you know, for probably another six months, although we have sessions in about three months. And he said, no, 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 I'm going in in uh, two months, and I've got to have it. I've got to do it. I said, but it's not finished. I don't have the console yet. I have just have a little loner board and, and so on. He says, well, it works, doesn't it? And I said, yeah, because I had brought my friend's Toto in, and we had checked out the room, and I think that's how he heard about it from talking to Jeff Picaro or something. And, and so uh, he talked me into uh, being the very first session here in the studio, and uh, I think that was July of 1981. シカゴシックスティーンの制作ではその準備に何よりも長い時間が費やされたという When we sat around to listen to the songs on Chicago 16 their proposed songs it was an exciting day for me I was in a room like this Danny Serafin's garage they were all around me and they said we're going to play you our songs and I went great and I was so excited and they played me 13 songs And in my opinion, they were all bad. And I said, guys, if I'm going to produce this band, we are not going to record any of these songs. And I learned that from Quincy Jones, because he said, if your name's going on it, it better be as great as it can be. So I proceeded to take a year and work with as many of them as wanted to work with me and write the songs for Chicago 16 out, co-write the songs, and remind them of their greatness. And that's how Chicago 16 came about. So the first few months were consumed with just writing.、Um, it, was, it was a slow process.、Um, we, we spent a lot of time. And my engineer partner, Umberto Gatica, was very involved in the sounds and helping us make the record. And we were, we were very meticulous. And、uh, we took care with every single note. And I don't know, you'd have to ask the guys in the band if they enjoyed the process. I suspect they did not. Enjoy the process. But, but I don't know. I think they,、um, I think they enjoyed the、uh, results. Chicago 16 is a very good album. It's a very good album. It's a very good album. It's a very I think the album was an instant success. Strangely enough, the song that you're, you're fixated on, Hard to Say I'm Sorry, came at the very end of the album. The album was pretty much finished. This song was David Foster and Peter Settera. The song was Peter Settera. And it was just one of those songs that I just sat down at the piano and. It just. Fell out. It just, it just came so fast. And he went home that night and wrote the lyrics, and、um, probably three days later, the, the record was finished. That, that song was finished and added to the album. Everybody needs a little time away. I heard a say from each other.
orchestra. It, it's not like today with the computers where you can just change things. Uh, I said, we can't. I mean, we have to have this thing delivered. The movie needs it. The record company needs it. Please, please, just try. Oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. Just try. Of course, he went up to the studio, and he was like a laser beam, and he just nailed those high notes, and it was unbelievable. And after all that we've been through, I will make it up to you. And I promise to. Can't let go. Here's that part. I'm not going to try and do it. After all that we've been When David approached me with the song, um, I, actually, I never heard it until we hit the studio, uh, till, I, till I went into the st studio to mix it, and uh, I, I thought it was great. Uh, you know, I, I, he had told me that he thought it was going to be the first single, and I thought, I think you've got something here. One of the things that uh, stands out in my mind about the mix was the idea uh, that I really wanted to achieve uh, was the idea of getting when the drums come in because it was so long before the drums come in that I wanted to make sure that the drum sound had a tremendous amount of impact, a lot of weight and a lot of size. And I remember working to get that uh, with the reverb and uh, an equalization on the drum kit so that when it came in it, it m made itself known very well. <laughs> The response to the response I got from all kinds of people was incredible. Everyone, everyone loved it, and uh, and I was pleased that m many many comments about about the uh, drum sound when it came in. That was one of the key things uh, I, I think about it. I don't think that made it a hit exactly. The song is a song, and I, I'm a firm believer in the song. But uh, I really, when I mixed it, I really thought that 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 entrance had to be dramatic. In a way. It was Chicago's comeback because we had, after the death of Terry Kath, it took a couple of years for us to find our balance again. And with David Foster's help and with uh, Peter's great song, um, the song became number one, the album was very successful, and we began to uh, feel more confident again. And our live performances were very exciting because um, I, th I think that there is a generation of Chicago fans who think that Chicago 16 was our first album. アルバム、シカゴ 16。
しかしアルバムに収められたこの曲のバージョンはアップテンポな「ゲットアウェイ」とメドレーになっている。後半部分を作ったのはロバートラン。It was David's idea, so to go from a ballad into a very up-tempo section was was also something that was very Chicago style. That was something we did very very well. So I think that was David's idea and his way of acknowledging uh, uh, Chicago's influence on pop music. And I think he 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 wanted to、uh, create a moment like that in Chicago 16. I'll tell you why we did that because that was just a moment for me where I said, okay, what did I love about Chicago Transit Authority? They'd take different tempos, they'd run one song into another, they'd put an ending on a song that had nothing to do with the song, and I think that was me trying to be like the old Chicago and encouraging them to go. Again, back to their greatness, and like, okay, why not? Why not do a little musical segue? And and、uh, wh- why do we just have to have twelve songs? Let's have a musical segue and go into something else, but still call it Hard to Sam's Heart. から2年後にリリースされたこのアルバムからも順調にシングルヒットが生まれた。Works is that we love to play music.、Um, we are all very good at playing music, and we've all individually and together、uh, realized that the more you play music, the more you understand that you don't know. So there's always something to learn, and that's a great attitude for a, a rock band to have. I was thrilled at the time, as I said, when I thought we had a, a hit, and then it went to number one, which is better, and it has become a classic. And、uh, and especially since it was David's first number one record,、uh, that that very special to me. I don't listen to much music, but、uh, this particular song is one of my top five favorites that I've ever been part of, production or writing. And、uh, when it comes on the radio. I actually leave it on the radio. I don't change. <laughs> Most of my stuff, when I'm driving around and I hear a song of mine on the radio, I just move, click it, go to something else. But this song, because it's, I think it's,、uh, it's very well crafted. It's a very well crafted record, song, and、um, you know we're we're really proud of it. 限りなく美しく忘れがたいバラード。Hard to say I'm sorry. 素直になれなくて Everybody needs a little time away. I've heard a say from each other.
keeps it alive and, um, and that's really why Chicago works so well. So 